In today's video, I'm taking a broken part from my router table and fixing it with 3D printing. If that's something that interests you, stick around. All right, so this video basically starts out with me taking a few poorly angled reference photos and importing them into Fusion as a canvas. Now keep in mind as you're watching throughout this video, this is probably my second or third time ever modeling inside of Fusion. As you can see at the top, I've got uh, 21 days left on my trial. With that said, I have modeled before using Shaper 3D as well as SketchUp, but I've wanted to try Fusion for a while given some of the advanced capabilities it has uh, in terms of calibration as well as CNC machining. So all I'm doing here really is using two different angles from my uh, reference canvases to try and draw out the shape of this bracket the best that I can. Now I was having some difficulties in the beginning getting the original reference photo to give me the shape that I wanted. I ended up drawing it from the top and you'll see in the print why that comes back to bite me in the ass a little bit and you can even see it right here that line down the middle somehow ends up in the final print but it doesn't affect any of the uh, way that it works so I just went with it. Afterwards we get it loaded up into Orca Slicer and I send it off to the Bamboo Lab P1P. So I printed two different iterations of these. I realized what I did in Fusion when I was designing it, and that was adding this extra back piece that didn't need to be there. All we really needed was this part. So I cut that off, reprinted it out at full scale, and it looks pretty good as far as the measurement from there and there. So let's go test it out in the router table. Now this is obviously just a test. I haven't done any of the, any of this yet. I wanted to just make sure I could get this accurate. Uh, it's tight, but it does slide in there. And it's just ever so slightly tight. I think also maybe it needs to be a little deeper. I think I'm going to go back into Fusion and chamfer these edges a little bit. And also raise the height of that up by another half a mil or right around there. It's very, very close. The other thing I need to do is shrink this in probably another half a mil. I think it's at 20.75 right now. Maybe if we put it at 20.5 or 20.25, that uh, that should be a pretty good fit. And that's, I'm, I'm very happy with this. This is the first iteration uh, of the design. I did not change the size of this at all after I designed it in Fusion. I just sent it to the printer. The only thing I changed, like I said before, was that back piece. I had started printing the that first iteration, realized what I'd done, left it going, and uh, cut it and reprinted it out just like this. So this is a first iteration, and I'm very, very happy with that. So I'm just going to go back into Fusion and make those small adjustments, putting the chamfers around all of those bottom edges. The other thing that I want to do here, since I know that we're really close to a, a good fit with that bottom portion is I'm going to go and add the slot in the back for the mounting holes for the back of the fence. I went through a few different ways of doing this and ended up on a center to center slot inside of Fusion. It is uh, part of their create tab. And then I just modeled the rest of that slot like it is inside of the actual piece. I was using my digital calipers to get actual measurements the entire time, so everything should be within a few fractions of a millimeter. Very 
version two is complete. The white one is version one. Version two, our modified, is this blue one. I'm really loving this matte navy blue Elegoo filament. It is awesome looking. All right, so this was the first one. It did fit. It's a little tight and a little bit uh, sharp on those corners. This is our second iteration. Oh, that is so smooth. It's got a little, very little bit of play left and right. Uh, but it is smooth on the, the bed. It sits in there nicely. It slides, slides around. That is going to be awesome. Okay, so we know that this piece fits. Next, I'm going to print it out of PETG just to make sure that we don't have anything that breaks. Then we can attach it with some bolts and see how it lines up. I think I'm going to replace both of them. Uh, having one that's cast aluminum and one that's 3D printed seems a bit odd. So I'm going to print two more of these out in PETG and we'll get them attached to the router fence and see how everything lines up once it is finished. All right, I am going to get the PLA swapped out for PETG, get the slicer files updated so it's for the PETG settings, and then we're going to send it over to the printer and get the final versions printed out. For the filament, I'm using Rapid PETG in black from Elegoo. Elegoo is pretty much my go-to brand for all of the filament that's in my shop right now. It's a great quality filament at a really affordable price. And if you're interested in getting your own, I'll have links to this one from their website. It's the Matte PLA in navy blue. And I'll also have the Amazon links where you can get the single and two packs of the Rapid PETG. Alright, well we went through a couple different iterations. I learned so much in Fusion over the last three or four hours of actually being inside of the software and modeling stuff. So we have our first iteration here, which was just a test piece to see if the slide would fit in there, which it did, but it was a little bit tight. So I went back in and remodeled it and put some chamfers around the edges here. And I also added the keyhole slot for the mounting bracket. I went and printed them again out of PETG with a denser infill. They're very durable, very tough right now. They could be stronger if I used a different material such as uh, a carbon fiber infused or PPA CF uh, like Bamboo Labs just announced. But for the purposes of this router table, PETG is more than enough. And that is where I'm gonna wrap this one up, folks. Thank you so much for joining me on another video. I am having so much fun recording these videos and really just, it motivates me, I think, seeing the progress that I'm making throughout each video to keep on going. And I think, you know, as long as I'm having fun with it, that's all that matters. In the last couple of videos, we've used 3D printing to do everything from fixing our router table to making some new clamp racks for us, and there's so much more that it has to offer. If you're interested in 3D printing content, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below so you never miss a video, and if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you have any tips or tricks that you use in your wood shop or 3D printing business, be sure to leave them down in the comments below, and until next time, take care.